This show is part of the Head Stuff Podcast Network. Okay, listen. Yes. You pieces of crap listeners. Uh, no, you're delicious and I love you. Love you so much. Um, we are going to the Cork Podcast Festival on September 8th. 8th. That's a Sunday, baby. Sunday, September 8th. Sunday beers with the boys. Yeah, and that's big, right. girls or non-binary people who want to come mm-hmm. as well. Everyone is welcome at our show. A live show, the very first the premiere live show of Young Hot Guys. It is in such such demand that I was chatting to some ladies in Galway that are driving all the way from Galway to see it because okay. it's the only show we're doing. That's the hottest thing I've ever heard. Isn't uh, it? Yes, it is the only one in the books at the moment. People always say, have you got one coming? And we're like, yeah, yeah, it's soon. But there's literally nothing else booked. So that is the only time to see a Young Hot Guys show live is Sunday, 8th of September, in the beautiful uh, Cork Opera House. Mm -hmm. See you there. It's a Sunday. It's the 8th of September. They're attractive. They're very attractive. Hot, loud. And a little bit sad. He was the best guy around. Oh, my, oh, my. Is it hot in here or what? You're an attractive guy. It's the fabulous Tony Cantwell. I'm talking about Shane Daniel Byrne. Mm. Ah, that rewild was really refreshing, but you know what? I want something a little bit more refreshing, something fruitier, something maybe with a little bit of sweetness to it. Killian, I have just the thing for you. <laughs> the clever eggheads down at the Rewar Brewery in Kilcool <laughs> County Wicklow have come up with a new lager shandy. It's lower alcohol. That's only 2.8%. Mm. And there's a totally tropical twist. It's almost like a drink that you could have bought years ago that's no longer available, but it's like a delicious pop soft yeah, drink. Yeah, that made a certain bodily fluid taste a certain flavour. Well, that's what I've heard, but... <laughs> It's a delicious, totally tropical (laughs) twist. Sure, you have your shandy with a bit of lemonade, but what about a totally tropical shandy? Actually, the design is so good. It looks really, really refreshing. Remember the time you did lilting on the podcast? Oh, yes, yes. Yes. That's a totally unrelated Unrelated, uh, thing. (laughs) Anyway, this actually is good, because you know when you go on Mm. holidays and they always are like, you get that shandy beer or whatever, you get like those lemon ones. Mm. Now we have one of our own here in our own little island. Uh, It's so good, and it's only 2.8. So you can kind of you can just have one have responsibly. One you can you can not, well you should always drink responsibly, <laughs> um, as we do. But enjoy your delicious re raw lager shandy low alcohol two point eight percent blah, blah, and re-raw. enjoy this podcast. Thank you for supporting, guys. You know that there's a lot of uh, elections happening. Elections, elections, elections. Yes, across Europe in the last recent weeks and the world. It's a, it's an ele- it's one of the biggest years of elections and so significant and so much is going on. Well, I am kind of addicted to elections. Are you? Are you? I think you kind of are. I'm looking for like last time in America. I always enjoy when we do the when we watch their elections mm. and you realize you can actually get CNN on your TV. I didn't know you could do that. And so anyway, I like that part. <laughs> this year is less exciting because I feel like Trump is going to win again. Yeah. But um, I I arrived in America, uh, and a month later Trump was elected. Like a month later, it was insane. Maybe even less. It was so insane. I arrived the day that the Access Hollywood thing came out, and everyone Grab was him like, by "The pussy." Yeah, and then I, and everyone was like, "Well, that's him done. That's a guaranteed Hillary Clinton victory." And then the night the night happened, and Trump was elected, and it was insane in New York City. It was just crazy. Me and my four roommates. We went home. One of whom a secret priest? No, no. This was Different before roommate. I lived with the secret okay. priest. Um, <laughs> Just, I'm listening. I know my Killian He probably Sunder- would have been in favor. I know he was my Sunderman lore. <laughs> and we just, uh, we walked home and smoked a joint and ordered some pizza. And we got a text from a friend, Carl, K- Carl Kinsella. He texted, and it was such a weird time. And he sent a text that kind of seemed to summarize it all, where he said, you know, it's, it's Thursday it's Thursday at 9 p.m., but it feels like no time that it ever has been before. Like, wow. it felt like we had jumped out of reality. And then I went into work the next day, uh, and I worked in a bar in, in, in Brooklyn, Black Forest, Brooklyn, which is a German bar. I got it just because I could speak German and never once used that. Okay. And I went in, and all of these people were crying. All these women were weeping. And they were ordering, like, double vodkas at, at like... 10 uh, in the morning and they were just crying. People were crying on the streets. It was insane. This is a comedy podcast. Yeah. (laughs) I'm just thinking about, I'm like, (laughs) even then those tears, they didn't know like how bad and the ramifications globally of (laughs) 
an ign- at, at the end of integrity and that, that holds up our democracy. So that's what I'm thinking about. Anyway, uh, to try and bring a sort of fun vibe to this, the Irish elections, I do enjoy following and the, they, one of them happened recently and there's this party called Indep- Independent or something like independent that. Independent Ireland. The, the independent, independent Ireland. They're a party, but they are... They sort also of the independents do very well at the moment in Ireland. So there, there was this uh, late debate kind of thing going on on the night of the election, and one of the guys from Independent Ireland was getting grilled on the, you know, it seems like if you you call yourself part of Independent Ireland, it seems like you're an independent, but actually, you're not. You're part of an affiliate party. So they're kind of grilling him, saying, "Are you kind of just?" False what advertising or whatever. Yeah. Are you saying so? Anyway, I I, I kind of cut it together because I just couldn't. It's kind of like the players, the players who play the players, the players. Uh, he was but a real player. It's uh, politicians using the word independent, okay? And they say the word independent so many times, and they say some of the most bizarre sentences I've ever heard. One man who, who did unseat some incumbents is Richard O'Donoghue in Independent but Ireland. Um, but yeah. you've been lumped in in a lot of the media coverage with the independents, independent TDs themselves. Mm. Do you believe the party you've set yourselves apart from those independents? 100% and the two main contenders for the mayoral election were independents, but independents, in, independent Ireland candidates. Did you get a boost because most of the electorate thought you were independent, uh, canvassing, <laughs> saying, I, I will be an independent voice, I'm an independent... And you're part of a group. You're not independent yeah. at all. So what we've always went out, we went out with Independent Ireland. We've always stayed with Independent Ireland. But what Independent Ireland allows for <laughs> is it allows to be an independent within a party, within a structure. Do you rethink the name party. Independent Ireland? Is Indep- it not a bit of a yeah. false advertising? No, but independent, when uh, independent Ireland. an independent no, TD. Uh, no, it's very independent, have have independent, have have independent, oh. it. independent Ireland <laughs> is an independent party which allows for independence to stay independent and gives them a structure. Oh my God. Independent Ireland is an ex Labour councillor. So I, he left. He left. He his left. Party. Which I know him well. I know him for twenty years. Yeah. He left. <laughs> went independent. Then he came back in, and now he didn't get elected, and he got the independent Ireland. And, 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 and out of the twenty-three well, candidates, let's not pretend that it's the unusual. Got a, out of the twenty-three candidates that got elected for under Independent Ireland and being independent for, uh, vice for Ireland, Independent Ireland is there. Independent oh. Ireland <laughs> is an independent party <laughs> which allows for independence to stay independent and gives them a structure. <laughs> Well, look, this is an independent podcast. Okay, yes, we are. It is produced under the... This is a head stuff podcast. We are independent. And I'm actually, it's just myself and Killian today. And we're here independent of Tony, who is, who is in term independent of us. And that's why we're independents together, young, working together, but independent in the group. Young Hot Guys podcast is, is a young podcast for hot guys to be... To allow, allow, to be allowing, guys to, guys allowing guys to, to be, be young, young and, and be both hot, young and hot. Within a hot structure. It, it, there are plenty of hot guys who are, who are within a party system. <laughs> and we have left that party system. But it's not a party, it's a structure. We a structure. We can be young and hot and, 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 and remain... <laughs> Young and hot. That's what we try to do. What we set out to do. That's what we set out to do, and that's what the people want. People, people want. Are, people ask them questions, though. People want their guys to be young and hot. Of course, no, nobody wants a guy who's not young or hot. But you're you're not young and hot at all. Is, would you th- rethink the name? False it, advertising. It, it's not, not false advertising, Barry. But the, the thing is, it depends. In false. terms of us being young and hot, we're young, young and hot. We're young and hot. Certainly, we are guys. We are both young. We're hot. We're young. Guys, but young you're hot not guys. young and hot at all. I, 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 well, I refute that. I refute that, and that's that's been levelled at us again by by the likes of yourself uh, and your, your, your cohorts in, in, in Johnny Brook. That's been levelled uh, at us voice, again. One voice, one, one voice. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Young Hot Guys. I just love that kind of stuff. I know it's all like nonsense and all this kind of, you know, whatever. But I just, I do love that kind of stuff. I just find it so funny. Someone said, independence allows people to be independent. He even it, called it a party. Yeah. He's like, party. well, independent in the party. And then he's like, uh, structure. Was like, what are you <laughs> <Yes>. doing? <laughs> Fuck off. The ones who got, like, the, the, the top guy, the guy who wants um, to, women to breed more. Hmm? He, that's when I hear that guy. Jesus. They got in the very end and he was like, Irish women should be breeding more. There should be tax incentives for them to breed. We are really... Is he a racist against his own kind? He wants more Irish women should be... The pressure's on women to breed more and create more Irish babies. But men do that as well. They need them. Yes, but women are the. Or he sees them as a, a cattle. Did he watch The Handmaid's Tale and think that's great? Yeah, some really good ideas in that. I love things like The Handmaid's Tale. I love the start of the watch the first few episodes of anything like that. Apocalypse. Mm. I love them. I love watching things slightly change. The Handmaid's Tale. Uh, Anna started watching it, and I'm such a. But like, it's so depressing. Oh, yeah, can we want? I do long day, hard days of work, Shane. You know, sitting on my hole, and I and then I come the home, and I come home from being at home, yeah. and then Anna turns on this really depressing show, and I'm like, oh, can we not watch something with? Yeah, swords? but it gets exciting. 
It gets exciting. It's, it's, it's I exciting, have a limit on sad. stuff with swords. That's what I said this to Raymond. We started watching Shogun. Oh, I really want to watch that. And we that. started watching a bit of that and then Raymond suggested something else and I was like, do you know what? I can't watch any more things that are just not real. I can't. <laughs> I know they were like, I sat down and way back in the lockdowns, I had never watched Game of Thrones and oh. it was a, such a joy because oh, it was yeah. like, this isn't the real world. This was really enjoyable distraction. But I can't watch anymore. We're watching, re-watching Breaking Bad at the moment. Okay. I want things like that. That's like... That really happened. It's, that, no, not that it really happened, <laughs> but that there's real human things go mm. on. Yeah. We've just started to hate Skylar. That's where we're at at the moment. Oh, wow. That's yeah. mad. Like, I... I couldn't watch a Breaking Bad. I, I I tried so hard. But did you not finish Breaking Bad? No, I, I didn't. Oh I man, it's it. unreal. Have you ever seen That's The Wire, bro? <laughs> Have you ever seen Breaking Bad? Was peak. No, I really when didn't the prestige like it. TV. And everyone was like this golden age of television. That was what, that was when you know, which is a, a like a term coined by the producers of TV, probably. Yes. Where they were like, it's this golden age of TV. This was around when Breaking Bad was out, and and all it's these. It's a Breaking of shows. Bad, The Wire, Sopranos, Antihero. Well, Breaking Bad trifecta. was after, after that. It was kind of. It was actually there was a, there was a, I can't really remember the shows, but it was the Breaking Bad era was a, post that, and there was the, apparently this great golden age of television. But my golden age of TV was actually like Desperate Housewives and uh, wow. and you know and Lost and. Uh, prison break and these kind of more trashy things I actually enjoy that stuff a lot more than deep character led kind of things where you I mean obviously Sopranos is amazing but I, I kind of prefer like trashy stuff where it's like you know there's z- zero character consistency like Lynette she all she wants to do is is like you know be with her husband and sort out but then suddenly she wants to go on and have a fling and like or who, does Lynette have an affair? Susan Susan like all she wants to do is to get with this guy for years she's in love with him and then it's like 10 years later and she's not with him anymore she's with a different guy there's no character consistency I love that I don't no, want to be I don't like. Them. I don't. Now, look, I'm as everyone knows. I don't want this to be a movie boy, TV boy podcast. But I don't like what the American shows have a really good setup, and then they just carry on into garbage. Oh, yeah. So, like Desperate House House has an interesting setup. A woman has shot herself, and you're like, why? Mm. What happened on the street? And we're like, well, ne- we'll figure out. And she talks to us every day, and then it just becomes like, Susan, I said I'm running the bake sale. I was like, what has this got to do with Mary Alice Young? Yes, she did. You know? She was quickly forgotten, wasn't she, Mary? But Alice? she's in every episode. Yeah, she does cameos. I was, I'd like, I'd like to buy one of her. I don't know who I'd buy one for. <laughs> she does cameos. Yeah, I was going to buy a cameo for um, my show and do, you know, the X Factor music mm. and do Shane Daniel Burn, but I didn't. That'd be good, and then we could put that in on the podcast so it no longer sounds like Shane Daniel Burn. Um, you know the way in, in the in the intro on this Shane Daniel Byrne. Shane We're Daniel talking about Byrne. Shane Daniel Byrne, who was spotted last outside the uh, I don't know being in, a creep in the Wicklow Mountains. Uh. <laughs> um, I'm a young hat guy. Just by the way, Tony, if you're ready, join us whenever you're ready. Yeah, he's, Tony's just standing. He's just us. sitting. He's like, he's very quiet today. <laughs> um, I'm wearing a hat because I got sunburned at the Beyond the Pale Festival. Oh, so you were there. But the next day, it, it was, was very sunny. I didn't have... I actually... I was doing my own show in Tala on the Friday. Mm. My tour was finished. It was really lovely. Well done. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Nobody did anything or made a fuss or sent me a text or anything. I just did it by myself and drove Richie home, went to bed. Um, wow. But I did that on the Friday and then I had to go to be on the pair the next day. So I couldn't get ready for two things at once. So I packed rubbish. I had no look, no outfit mm-hmm. for Beyond the Pale, which I was thought upsetting. you looked good. Yeah, I looked okay, but I didn't have like a, a little look thrown together. I usually mm. have a bit of something. And I did, anyway, I didn't bring sun cream. I forgot that. So I got burnt and it was to the point where I did put sun cream on eventually, but somebody was like, Shane, have you got sun cream in your neck? And I was like, yes, it's already burnt. It's too late. Yeah. But it was a monumental um, sunburn for me because it was the first time I'm bald enough to be sunburnt on the scalp. Oh. And that's why I have to wear this hat because now it's peeling and it's, it's your first so red gross. top. My first red top. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and it, do you know why? Because I normally am a good boy. I'm obedient. I'll wear the sun cream. I'll drink water. I'll wear sunglasses, I'll wear a hat. And I was like, I thought I was wearing a hat. And then I remembered. It wasn't mm. a hat I was wearing. It was a visor. <laughs> and a visor, very like a hat, except it doesn't cover your head. <laughs> it doesn't cover the, the so bit that it's I supposed to be covered. I created a little bowl for the sun to yeah, just... Yeah, like a bullseye for the sun. You're exactly. like, mm, this is where I am. Burn me up. Burn <laughs> me up. And it was very upsetting. It was funny because we were with... Uh, uh, our bald colleague Richie Bree. Yes, and you were like, "This I've had to do like I had to moisturize my head, yeah. which is a weird thing because you still have hair on your head." 
And Richie was just like, you know, you were first of all, you were like, this is my first time getting my head sunburnt. And Richie Bree was like, no, I remember, I, re I remember my first time. Is that okay? Is that a, or it's too, it's, he's got such a sexy accent. You do, Belfast is what you're trying to do there, but you sounded like a I southern draw. I remember my first time. No, I remember my, I remember my first time getting burned on the head. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> he does do have, Richie. I don't know what I don't want to do him. Sometimes Richie is one of them. He has that sexy way of speaking. Yeah, but he's sometimes attractive. sexiness is a waste on a straight man because they don't know at all they're sexy. They think mm. they're like a big goofball. And it's like, no, you're like a sexy guy, but they don't know. Yeah, such yeah. a waste for them. Well, that's what makes them. You don't know you're beautiful. Maybe, that's what makes you beautiful. Yeah, and Richie does light up my life like nobody first. else. <laughs> the way that he flips his head gets me overwhelmed. See, which when Tony's not here, we sing music that I know. We use okay, music yeah, references yeah, yeah. that I know, which would be One Direction. But no, when you said you had to put like the cream on your head and your hair, Richie who's completely does the whole shaved head. So yeah, he's completely wet bald. shave. He's like, I don't have to worry about that. Mm. He didn't have moisturizer in his hair. But look, it wasn't great to be out in the sunshine. Oh man, did it was you have gorgeous. a nice time doing I the Beyond the Pale? I had a lovely time. I did wake up the next day quite ill, and I had to go into town uh, on the Saturday of the show that we were doing. I had to like go into town to actually. Uh, get like medicine for myself because I, I like re I you went really off -site? congested. I went off site, really congested, and like, uh, yeah, I kind of had a sore throat and stuff like that. I was hungover, and sure, but it was one of those ones where I go, like, no, no, I'm, I'm actually sick. I'm actually it's sick. not that. I am, I'm, re I find I don't mind lots of getting older, right? But I am finding this year now, I'm really finding the festival a struggle, and that upsets mm. me. Yeah, I'm like, I, I can. Like, I've done festivals for many years. The other day I saw this picture of myself. Maybe I'll show you and then... And then I can... We can put it on when the when the episode comes out. And I was like, I looked at what I used to look like at a festival. Mm. And I was like, we used to sit in dirt and that was okay for us. I'm, I'm festivaling yeah. a very long time. Um, we're my girls group. It's a group for just me and my girls. Um, You're doing a me. I'm doing a you because what I can't. I can't find it. This is so frustrating. It's right there. This is so frustrating. Shut up, kidding. I'm I feel also like still what talking. You must feel like all the time. Look, there's me at a festival many years ago. Let's see. Look at the filth. Just sitting, sitting in dirt. You look like strong. I, I was probably thin at the time. You look that's like what a that's, that's what you're getting at. No, you look like uh, you got shoulder. Anyway, I'll put it. But I'm sitting on the ground, and my feet are covered in muck. My legs are covered in muck. Like, my hair is gross. It's There's a carling mud. can and a nutri grain. Just sitting on the mud. <laughs> yeah, like that's what we used to do. That's who I used to be. There's me now, looking cute. You look better now. Um, thank you. But I find I was like the idea of a Sunday. Like you can, they they, they, put, you know, they put the big axe on a Sunday night so the people yeah. say. I'm like, yeah. you can put on. Share if yeah. you want. Okay. Not, <laughs> not share. Immediately, <laughs> immediately like bailed out. But of that. you could put on somebody really big. I don't know. Obviously, I'd go see share. Like, you monkeys. can put on Elvis, right? Put on it. No, I'd go see Elvis. Of course, you go see Elvis. Okay, they I don't know. I was just thinking of other one name people. Resurrected Elvis and put him on at you know. Who uh, would be beyond the pale on a Sunday? I don't know. Whatever you can put on whoever Elvis you want. Elvis is only I'm playing <laughs> this small gig in Wicklow in his red. Uh, then he will go back to being dead. It was a beautiful festival. Loads of people came to the comedy. I couldn't believe it. And I actually stumbled myself when I started off. I was hosting and I start, you know this, but I'm telling the audience. I was hosting and I couldn't believe how many people had turned up. Like yeah. I peeked out about 10 minutes before and I was like, oh, there's people there were grand. Mm. I, thought that, I thought there'd be 20 people, but there was a couple hundred people both days. Yeah, it was amazing. Totally crazy. So thank you so much. Um, but I stumbled. I didn't even do my jokes I'd prepared because uh, I stumbled because I was like, oh my God, what the f what are you doing here? Like, <laughs> I forget that pe people listen when you say, I'm doing this. I forget that people actually hear you sometimes. It was great. We so smashed. It was, great. It, was smashed. A treat. it was a Every really nice one because all every comedian did good. There wasn't one person when we were like, ooh. Yeah, that, that was and a festival is horrible for oh, comedians. Ho awful. Like, it's really hard work because you, they can't see your face as well. Mm. And that's really important for getting your jokes across. That You can't hear them. They're also far away, usually. Yeah, they're far away. They were kind of far away now the other day, but then mm. it was okay. Anyway, look, so a dream. A so, Gurren Mahagiv got in for coming to see yeah. Uh, when I went in to get my um, very visibly hung over and very like I was wearing like a shirt and shorts and had sunglasses on and mm -hmm. clearly hadn't showered or whatever or I had showered and like I went into the pharmacy and it was like to, to the pharmacist I was like listen I'm, 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 I'm sick I've got a <laughs> congestion and she was just like were you at the festival and I was like yeah and she was like okay 
it's a headache tablets or something like that. And I was like, no, no, like I'm actually sick. I'm not hung up. What do you think she's going to give you? She gave me Sinutab. Um, okay. I managed to convince her because I was like, listen, I'm on stage in five hours. I need to be better for this. But she was definitely looking at me going like, you're just fucking hung over. Just yeah, yeah, deal, yeah. With, deal with it. Get like a LucasAid sport and just fucking go back out there and deal with it. You're, uh, but I'm like, no, no, I'm actually sick. Which is such an embarrassing thing. I had nothing. I usually have a cocktail of uh, like electrolytes, salpidines, whatever else. Yeah. I have a few, a Baracus, all those guys together. But I had nothing. Okay. I had nothing with Sunday? me. I was, I found this, I was dying to go home. Yeah. <gasps> you know what happened on the way home? I drove Amy Gallagher home and we were on the way home and it was fine. Some know-it-all man was like, oh, it'll take you two and a half hours getting home tonight. Like, Fuck it, bumper to bumper. Didn't see a car the whole way, so... If that man's listening, oh uh, yeah, wrong, call, yeah, fucking idiot. Yes, I was. I'm. I Open should make him my boy. He is your boy. Like, you know, bitch. he might. He might. There's like a little. He's just walking around somewhere right now, and then suddenly, he yeah, just feels I hope a little he feels bit. It. He feels a little bit weird, and it's that because he's been made your boy. Yeah, and then we were driving along, and it's in Roundwood area, and we're on the way home, and then a deer walked out in front of the car. And I had enough time to slow down. We we're like, oh my God, oh my God. Just really casually, a doe, a deer. A female deer? A drop of golden sun. <laughs> she walked out, right? Just strolled out real casual. And I was like, oh my God. And my phone was in the thing. Um, I didn't have time, but the car was stopped. I didn't have yeah. time to take a picture because I was like, oh my God. And then I was like, I've never actually seen that in real life. And then as we drove like a, a tiny bit more, the leaves of the tree, we moved around the tree. There was a deer crossing sign. The deer was crossing at the deer crossing sign. <sighs> And then I was still stopped and I said, we're two of us were enamored by this and delighted. And we had just also seen a hot air balloon. I'll, I'll put a pin what in that. Uh, not to pop the balloon. What is going on Put a pin journey? in this hot air balloon, right? But did you fucking take mushrooms tell before you, you got thing. in the car? <laughs> no, no. So then... Um, Alice in Wonderland tale. Yeah, but I said, I said, oh, I better be careful now in case she has any friends. And it was like the... S of friends came out of my mouth. And then you just heard in the distance, Fenton! Fenton! <laughs> no, not that. <laughs> Jesus a, Christ, Fenton! A baby deer walked out. Oh. With the spots and everything, Bambi. like Bambi. Just strolled out real casual. And was just there a like, bit of ice, black ice on the road? There was nothing there. She was, she was he or she was fine. But it was absolutely, like, I mean, Jesus. I love, I, I'm an urban person. I love seeing the urban foxes. Yes. That's always a moment where I will maybe believe in something more than myself. <laughs> like, which, you know, I do there not. Is a, I do there not. is something that happens when the urban foxes, like, just stops and looks directly in your you, eyes. Yeah, because they look at you and square And you kind of just go, zoom. you kind of return to your animal state or something like that. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. I, am an, I am an animal just but like you. This was much better. This was much better. That's incredible. And the hot air balloon, right? You don't see that very often. I used to be terrified of that. So as a you child. saw a hot air balloon after or before? On the way, just before leaving the car park. All right, so I got into the car park. And this is what I enjoy about festivals. Everyone, I think there's a part of a festival is that everyone is who they truly should be. Mm. But we're, we're constrained by whatever capitalism and all the other mm. stuff. But I think being at a festival is you become the truer version I of yourself. I saw a documentary about Glastonbury. I'd love to go to Glastonbury. Um, it's too big for me. It is a bit so, too big, but I'd love to so go just big. to see it. Um, I did see a documentary and they were just going around the campsite like kind of just filming people and there's some lad in his like you know camping chair just like shoveling beers down himself mm. and they're like what's what's Glastonbury about and he's like this is where we live man this is where we live out there we're not really living this yeah. is what we do this is us living life and I was just like man you live in life is binge drinking like 20 cans and then yeah but he's on the land though <laughs> Killian he's out on the grass he's out on the grass it's solstice you know what I mean it's a whole thing um, and the hot air balloon the way I, the way I saw the hot air balloon is because this guy I walked in on those you know those metal floors they have to walk on and I walked in on that and this guy just goes hey hot air balloon and I just thought that was like we were both on our own he's like hey because he knows that chap shouldn't miss the hot air balloon. <laughs> I know he transpired then, he's a fan of the podcast, so hello to him. Aww. But he was like, here, hot air balloon. And then I was absolutely just, I was like, what a beautiful exchange. <laughs> I just think lads also come into their own in a, at a festival. Mm. I, my, one of my favourite lad thing ever was at Body, uh, I was at Body and Soul Festival. Mm. Which festival? Body and Soul. And this chap was on the phone at the temple side and he's like, oh no, honestly like, we're just down at Legendary Picnic here. And it was just, <laughs> and I was like, that's absolutely fine. He called it the wrong festival, wrong time of year. He wasn't at Electric Picnic, he was in a different county, but he just said Electric Picnic and whoever he's on the phone to was like, oh, he's at yeah, Electric Picnic. He's at Electric Picnic. I thought that works. 
We have spinny uh, chairs today. I'm yeah, we're spinning around. Look at this. I feel very I like it's not picked up on the audio. I don't think the audio is picking it up. When you go in the radio, sometimes they tell you not to spin the chair. It's like it's grand. They, when you go in on the radio, they do what we're not very good at is they do this kind of nodding thing when you're telling a story. Yes. They kind of do this. When you're telling a story or you're saying something, it's very strange. They'll look at you like this. And they give you lots of face back. Like that. That's only for visual I watchers. prefer the Ray. Ray Darcy. Yeah, he gives you a bit. He gives you a bit of... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you hear that how... way you know. That way you know he's hearing it. You hear the difference. I heard someone on the radio recently, not uh, like a, a smaller radio station, mm. and they had people on for a quiz and they're like, what's your name and where are you from? And she's like, Susan. It's like, where are you from, Susan? She's like, Balan Tubert. And she's like, amazing. Next up is Luke. Luke, where are you from? <laughs> and it was like, he's like, whatever, Give Limerick. And she's like, to... Limerick, great. And then just passes on. Whereas when you hear Ray do it, oh, yeah. he's so professional that he like has a big story. Yeah. And he's like, don't they do that there? And he talks to them. It's like sometimes watching mm. a really bad MC can mm. really spoil the comedy night, yeah. the comedy club. <laughs> there was a guy I saw one time and people ask their jobs and the idea is that you'll start some kind of conversation. Yeah, yeah. You, you're looking for bits of things. It doesn't always work so you try your best. Mm. But this guy was like, uh, he doesn't even live here anymore so it's grand I can talk about him. But he was like, oh God. going through, it was as if he was conducting a survey as to find out what everyone's job was. Oh yeah. And he's like, I can and, feel uh, like that sometimes. It can. He's like, what's your job? And she's like, she went data analytics. And rather than go, See, data analytics, like, this is amazing. People can have jobs that, like, no one knows what you're really doing. <laughs> like, you can do your degree in data analytics. Oh, yeah, I have a CPD in data analytics. Oh, I'll tell you, but I wouldn't. You could just say you're doing whatever. I'm analyzing the data here. You yeah, hit and look, and no one will know what you're doing. It's not it. You're going to be a murder. <laughs> I hate that job. Who's a shop? Who's got a job with a one name? You know what I mean? You can spin no, it. No, you don't need to go see Sharon Live. Yeah, you can, <laughs> you can spin it into all that, right? But he just went, she, what else your job? And she went, data analytics. And he went, data analytics, cool. And who's that person? Like, and just went to the next person and asked their job. It was a horrible night. It was, I, I bombed. I bombed, which is a rare for me now, but it happens. And it was a very garish football light in your eye and you couldn't see the audience at oh all. God. And that's my idea of hell. I hate not being able to see them. Yeah. And in the theatres, they're always, they're always like, if we put the lights up on the, the audience lights any further, they'll be very... And I'm like, I don't care. This isn't a play. I want to see them. I want to see, see the them. public. I like seeing them. I did some nice gigs this week in Cork. Oh um, yes, I you doubled Cork. up in Cork. Yeah, I doubled up. Well, it's nice because you were very popular in Cork. I love Cork. I do. I go there. I gig there nearly as much as I gig in Dublin. I just love going down to Cork. I don't know what it is. Um, and I, I went down. I did a show called Test Tube Babies in Collins, which is a, Collins is a comedy stronghold in Cork and a great and, music venue also and music venue and uh, and uh, but it's an alternative comedy night run by Mark Maloney and uh, it was very good it was very weird you know you know when alternative comedy sometimes like it's it's just like the audience is not laughing yeah but sometimes they say they're doing funny. alternative comedy and what actually they're doing is a comedy that's not funny yeah yeah, yeah sometimes yeah. that can happen yeah, and they want yeah. to be really intellectual and they're like yeah. Let me tell you. It's performance mm -hmm. art rather like, than comedy. Proust would say, you're like, this isn't funny. <laughs> Very comedy Brechtian. has to be funny. Top, the top word is funny. <laughs> you can do whatever you want up there, yeah. but it has to be yeah, funny. Yeah. Well, this was alternative comedy, but very funny. Mm. And uh, and like, I mean, what we do would be alternative comedy as well. So, I mean, it's not like alternative I'm comedy. I'm not. I'm very broad. Um, very broad. I mean, very kind of like top of the top of the barrel kind of. Is that the phrase? Um. I don't know. Yeah, not yeah. What lowest common denominator kind of comedy? That's kind of Shane. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm not great. Anyway, what were you doing? Well, it was it was really good. Mark had like this thing where he had the salmon of knowledge, but actually it turned out it was the salmon of Rockford College. Um, okay, I love that. And that was good. Is that then, the fish head? And it was the fish that head. That looked yeah. a lot like, like a foreskin. Like a, yeah, yeah. A willy. It was a I thought it was a willy looking, head. I think that was. And Mark's uh, partner had made it, and it was like this foreskin head thing. Yeah. Um, pink. Pink. It was pink, and then Salmon. he got some guy to come up to be uh, be something else. I can't remember. Some sort of fish. And then he made them kiss. And uh, it, it, he had put like some sort of fish head on the audience member. And he was supposed to kiss the, the lips, the very kind of lippy lips of the fish head. He's supposed to move his head into it. But instead, the audience member, being the audience member, just got his mouth and fully kind of like made out with the oh my god <laughs> the head of it and it was very funny it was really it was good it was a very good time um, I saw Mike Maloney do a thing when I was in Cork he had some guy join in on a game with him of some kind like that mm. if you ever you're, people are sometimes worried about sitting in the front of a comedy show yeah just do whatever you're told right so if if 
Well, if they ask you a question, just give them the answer. Don't try and do your own joke. Yeah. Like, unless it's you're very funny, and it's not going to work. If anyone gets you just say, I was just following orders. Yeah, you just do what they say. That's the safest thing, because the guy he was asking to do stuff kept trying to do jokes, and then they oh, got yeah. this... It, but the jokes went funny, and everyone was nervous for him, because he was obviously nervous, and mm. then we all felt nervous, and then there was this tension of, like, yeah. they are going to have a fight right now. <laughs> so if you're ever... They ask you to do something, you can obviously be like, no, 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 no they might move on. But just the safest thing you can do to protect yourself. I did a, a mm. podcast. Oh, I forget what they're called. 49th. Um, shit, I'm sorry. I forget the boys' names. Um, 49th something. And they said that one of them went to Drama McNally and they prepared. He was like sitting in the front and he was like prepared jokes that he oh would. Oh my God. If, if she asks you insane. this, say this. And one of them went to Frankie Boyle and he said something like, Oh, that's If such he a bad says idea. anything, just tell him that. That you look like a lesbian or something? I was like, what? That you don't, yeah. you're not a lesbian? I was like, how is that going to help? Oh you can't God. prepare. Especially Frankie Boyle, because I, like, I went to see his show. He gives out to people if they're even just like, there was some poor girl just having minstrels. And he was like, you look like a fucking rat. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it was, he'll destroy you for anything. So if someone tried to be funny, oh, my God. He don't be mean to the audience. I know that's part I of know, his it was thing very funny. Whatever, it was but... really good. It was very good schadenfreude. Um... But no, it's very. It's very I, I, I loved. I loved the. the what did you ultra, do that was alternative? Ultra. I did a character. I did. I pretended to be my granddad. Okay, great. And then I talked about it. And then I, because I came out and I was wearing my photo wildlife jacket. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then I said, I'm sure you're all wondering why I have the photo wildlife jacket if because I'm German, uh, but just my my grandson Killian is actually. Uh, so then I was my grand. So I, and then That's I did the good. song uh, that I did for Bureau de Change because I was Gustav Scharfmesser, the actor. Um, oh, very good. So I did a whole thing. It was great. I really enjoyed it. Um, alternative comedy. It's my new thing. I read um, online that you smashed. No, I read online that you were absolutely killing it. Oh, that's good. Okay, that's good. And then we did Comedy Bunker the next night. Uh, and that also... Wait, uh, that's where I read you are. We're absolutely killing it. Yeah, At the yeah. Comedy Bunker. No, I was good the night before as well. Sure. But anyway, the, the, what happened was I, 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 uh, Mark had offered for me to stay in his house. But I was like, oh, I don't want to... Uh, you know, put up. A I fuss. would sooner die. So I uh, <laughs> really <laughs> not not Mark specifically, but I I feel like I am uh, too old and set my ways to to do like oh stay in ours unless yeah. it's like immediate close friend family situation. Mm. Stay in ours. No, no. Ca- you wouldn't couch surf. No way would I sleep on someone's couch. No, way. I cannot anymore. I've grown out of that. What do you do? What do you? you I, th- I was thinking it's the festival as well. I was like. Somebody, people would just you'd go like, I was sleep in my tent. What the fuck was I doing? <laughs> the idea of that sharing my space now with somebody else. No, I'm I'm gone out of the way of doing that kind of carry Ray on. barely lives with you. It's like, he's there for now. Who? <laughs> Who? Ray? No, drop sh- no I'll share space with Ray. With Ray. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I'll share space with Ray, but like, not with, no, I just, I could not. Absolutely not. I um, not. Well, I, I did something that, that, um, you slept in his bed. No, I went to I I booked into a hostel because it was only it was cheap. It was like 20, 24 euro or Did something. Did you book like into that. the? I booked into sh- sh- so a hospital, a hostel. <laughs> yeah, a hostel. I don't say the name. Um, in Cork. Uh, is I, it, I don't, is it, it green? No, it's it's up a hill. I'm sure people know it. It's not okay, a big yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. have the worst experience of my life, but maybe I will. Because, because in Shandon. I I don't no no it was in it was in Cork City. Um, right. and I stayed there before when I was younger. And uh, and I loved it. I was like, oh, this is great. But I didn't realize I was like 21 at the time. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I booked into this hostel. I was like, it's dead cheap, and I'd forgotten that I'd actually stayed in there before. And then I was, uh, I was, I was, go- I was like, Mark, was like, oh, you're gonna stay with me? And I was like, no, no, I'm staying in uh, at this hostel. And he was like, okay, cool. Uh, and I was like, do you know about it? Is it any good? And he was like, um, I don't know. I'll ask. I think my, I think my partner knows about that. And then he came back to me an hour later, and he's like, listen, um, Horatia Gold stayed there when he was touring. And yes, he, that's what. It, that's and he the did one not I... have a good time. He did get a wink of sleep, and I was just like, oh god. So he's like, if it goes badly, like, uh, you know, let me know, uh, and you can just come and stay in ours. I went to the hostel. I was in. I booked a smaller one, so it was it was like eight instead of like fourteen people. I. I booked a mixed dorm because I thought maybe the boys will be on their better behavior. Yeah. Turns out when there's a mixed dorm, it's just boys who want oh, a yeah, quiet yeah. room. Oh, okay. So it was actually oh, very quiet. Uh, but it was weird, man. It was weird. It was like in this dorm, all these different guys all being really, really quiet. Uh, but the, the the beds are super squeaky. So all every once in a while, you can just hear guys going oh, like God. that or the occasional. 
like that. Oh, just, and it was God. just really, really hot. And people were just squeaking around. There was no curtains, so we all woke up at like 5 a.m. So many people just silently on their phones, just doom scrolling. And just this really tense, sweaty atmosphere. I mean, it was fine. It wasn't loud. so I Was, was there a shower? There was a shower, but then there was like the queue for the shower. Um, and the South African guy got in there. And he actually, the only thing I spoke, the whole time I was in there, only two words were kind of shared or two exchanges exchanges when it was just a South African son like how are you and I was like oh good and he's like I was like did you sleep well and he went just about and then that was it no one said I was in there for nine hours no one said anything except that it was horrible I yeah. can't I see I'm, I, I don't know whether that's age but I couldn't do that I just don't want that I'd rather like break even you know, for the gig, spend the whole money from the gig on staying somewhere. Don't yeah. do that. I just can't. I did stay in a hostel in London, but they were like, I booked a room my own. And they're like, oh, that's a nice one. It was disgusting. Like, yeah. I just can't. I don't know. I need some kind of I hook can still rough it. I, th I think it was just because the room was hot and there were no curtains. If the room wasn't hot and there, were, and there was curtains, I think I probably would have been fine, to be honest. The but farting? If, ah, the farting was occasional. It was occasional and muffled. God, I don't know. I just, that feels bleak to me. <laughs> I don't even like the idea of you being there. I'm like, no, you shouldn't have stayed there. It's funny going... Uh, going How much was it? Going from, it was about 24 euro. Oh, okay, that it's is... so cheap. Yeah, but it's funny yeah. going like off stage, got a standing ovation that night, okay? Oh, so going off stage drops that in. to a standing ovation and people are cheering and cheering. But I had to run to check in because the check in was at 12 and we ran late. So I literally like standing ovation, grab my stuff walk to the hostel and then like, you know, maybe 20 minutes later, I'm just lying in a room and it's just like, Boop. and I was here, previously I'd heard, ah, woo, yeah, you're amazing. Mm. And then I'm in a fucking hostel bed and I'm just like, okay, I'm back down to earth. I do always I'm find that funny. You do, you're just back on the street again. Yeah. I find that funny doing the tour shows. If there's, if you're, if the, whoever's supporting me was gone or whatever, mm. then you just finished on your own. You put your little stuff in your little bag. <laughs> And you just go to the car and you just go home and then you're like, text and say, like, do we need milk? You know, it's just like you're mm. instantly back to, I know that everyone finishes work and then returns to their life. But when your work is very high octane, adrenaline based mm. and people screaming, relying on you for, for laughter, you're the only one talking in the room for an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> that's a lot of pressure. But it's, yeah. it's weird. I'm kind of used to it now, but it is, it is a weird thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I, uh... But it's not. It's nice. It's nice. Like you bump down back to earth. It's re it's really really good. What do um, you think, Tony? You're right. Yeah, Tony. No, he's just. No, I I, I I I don't. I disagree no, with take you, Tony. Your, take we'll take your time. He's having an issue with his trousers. Okay. Well, look. <laughs> listen, Grant. <laughs> what? Hey, you can stop what we do. I doubt it. I will tell you all about it. I, Oh my God. So you, you missed that. So the day oh my Killiam God. was doing the Saturday at Beyond the Pale, on the Sunday, the kids from the cabin crew were there. They've had the viral international sensation hit, right? They're the greatest musicians the country's ever produced. Yeah, but it was absolutely insane. So they were playing and the internet was so bad all weekend at that festival that yeah. miles up at the car park, you get some internet. So I text Raymond and was like, find out when those kids are on. And he's like, they're on at four o'clock in the same tent as the comedy. Mm. So I went back into the behind the tent and then you see all the kids there and it's like, oh my God, there's like, there's <laughs> loads of them. And they're the, iconic, they're f like, they're fucking... Yeah, but you know what's funny? Huge. You see them on those videos, right? And you see them on, when they're on stage with another aging moment, a, a lady called Becky Hill, they performed with uh, in Cork, I believe. Yeah. Whoever Becky Hill is, she was very good to have them on. I'm sure she's a, 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 a pop singer, a starlet of some kind. I'm not sure who she is, but Becky Filling Hill. The RDS. Becky Hill had them, was it RDS? It looked big. I, I don't think. know. I thought that was in Cork. Anyway, wherever they were, they played that. I found that very emotional watching that video. But then when you, you see them, you, you see them as these performers, rappers, and they, they write some of those music and some yeah. of those lyrics as well. But then they're just kids and they're like in the back where the night before people are sitting around at tables drinking and all the rest. But they're just playing. Yeah. <laughs> they're just normal children. And it's like, of course they're just playing because yeah, they're just little they're kids. kids. They have like hula hoops and they're doing handstands and all that stuff. But And everybody is just beaming. Everyone, yeah. they're oblivious to this where everyone's, because there's not normally kids in that scenario, mm. in that environment. So everyone's just beaming and we're all delighted and it's like helping your hangover that there's kids playing. Yeah, They do so many songs. Really? They do. Oh, they, they have a set. They have more than they that. They did a half an hour set and they half just. Half an hour set? Yes, and they just did. They did 
banger after banger and it was like literally somebody would be kind of the lead in each one and then they're kind of one of the grown ups would set, was on stage too and she would kind of say give it up for this and then the next song would start immediately mm. and it was just beautiful it like, was it non-stop was, it was like a punk rock gig or something they yeah but it, was, you... it was no pauses wow. no like no talking to us no chatting it was just straight in they passed there's only a certain amount of microphones they passed the microphones to each other they did not miss a beat like so every mic pass they are so professional wow. and like it's so funny because they're over they're just little kids in the back and they're like get in your line get in your lines okay who's listening who's listening come on and you know all that stuff normal kid stuff then they got on stage and they're absolutely perfect wow. and their lyrics are so fun like being proud of being from Nakhnihini they're proud of that Aww. and then like one of them was a, a guy in a he had like a uh, like a green Adidas shorts and t-shirt combo, uh, full outfit, and he one of his lines where, I I still party even on a Thursday, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. And I, when they have all these whoever all those adults they have working with them around them those mams and all as well, I think, they're good people. They're excellent because they were like down in front of the stage moving them around pointing them where to go they can take direction on the fly It was they were actually stunning and everybody was so up for it so the, that moment when it, the, this, the tune starts everyone lost their shit we all waited patiently yeah. and we did whatever we were told they said if they meant to clap we all clapped we did yeah. everything we were told and then when they played the song everyone just lost their mind and that <laughs> when you hear it was honestly so so lovely and actually like really emotional just watching everybody we're all there to have a good time yeah. but also it's us People as adults, well we really want to support want them. To support we want them. them to have a great time, yeah. and it's this like feedback loop then of like the the everyone supporting them is very touching. Mm. Them doing it at all, very touching. Yeah. The whole thing is just very moving. Like everyone was crying. <laughs> It was just absolutely brilliant, and like when you hear all the adult voices shout back, "I doubt it." There's just something I don't know. They were they were just. It was one of the best gigs I've ever been to. It was just That's stunning. So nice, and uh, give it to me straight. They were in the same tent as us. Who got more people? They got more people. <laughs> no, well, I don't know. No, no, I don't joking. know. I don't know. The comedy time was pretty busy. They, no, but um, they were. Um, they had a standing gig. Our comedy was sitting. Oh yeah. Oh my god. They are so wonderful. They are such great people. It's such a slice of joy to mm. have in our lives. Yeah, we did. I, we just got it for free. For I can't free. Believe it. Think you can stream do it now. What we do. I doubt it. Think you can stop what we do. We've uh, been saying that around the house, me and Raymond, just like going like every now and then if he's in the other room, I'm like, I was like, if you think you can stop what we do, <laughs> like, if they think you can stop what we do, and he's like, I doubt it. And I'm like, yeah, many as many variations of that as possible. Oh, it's wonderful. Life has never been this good. Controversially at the festival, and I'm sorry to all the uh, queer people listening, but I thought Jessie Ware was a bit rubbish. I thought she was okay. Oh, I didn't enjoy that. I like Jessie Ware. I was kind of like, oh, this is good. I'm kind of, I think I've reached peak of lady pop stars coming out going, I'm mother. It was like, right. Mm. I'm just, there's too many new pop girls all yeah. the time. There's a new one called Chapel Rowan. When am I supposed to have time to find out about this? Chapel Rowan came out of nowhere, but we, apparently the, has been this, doing it for like nine, I, ten That's what years. everyone keeps yeah. saying. No, yeah. no, no, she's not. Like, I was like, this is just made up by the pop industry now. They're like, no, 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 she's been on the scene for years. Troy Sivan tweeted about her in 2014. How does everyone have time? Like, does people have to have jobs? I don't understand how all the gay boys know the latest, who the latest girl is and who we love. I'm like, I yeah. can't keep up. Who's your, you know, the way there's kind of like... My your, icons. Your icon. Who's your, well, you're, you're, you know, you're, you know, the gay men tend to, you know, fixate on one, one person who it is. I'm very upset. No, I don't really have that, but I'm very upset. We should have done a Pride issue last week. Cause oh, of course. Pride's now over and as re we must remain in... Uh, Silence and indifference towards uh, yes. LGBTQ plus yeah. issues for the next yeah. eleven months. Of course, but I would I I don't have one like majorly. I don't have a, a fanaticism. You don't. But I was very upset that they moved Electric Picnic, and I'm going to be in Edinburgh, and Kylie Minogue was playing. I found that very upsetting. Oh yeah, that uh, that was a bit of a blow because I'm like, when will she do it again? Or I think do, when Kylie will she is the straight man's gay icon, though. I think like I think straight men adore Kylie in a way that they aren't comfortable adoring other kind of female pop stars. I just love her. She's brilliant. If I, I think it's, uh, let me think. She has so many hits for years. Yeah. Who's, you know who, um, James Clarges, you know James Clarges, famous Dublin man, James Clarges. I don't know him. His is cool. He's, you do, you know of James Clarges. I know of him. You went yeah. to his birthday. Yeah. 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 But he, he's a famous uh, uh, man about town. Sure. And, uh, and now in London. But he, his one is Lil Kim. I always thought that was so cool. That's cool. Because yeah, that's it's a like cool one. a little bit uh, and is obsessed. Like life revolves around, you know, or you see sometimes like some gay men like love 
these pop stars so much they're literally like life evolves revolves yeah yeah it does them. yeah yeah I like um, um, some Whitney okay um, and do you know what like you, you put on Whitney at the end of it I, see nights everything's gone to I don't like all cool dude techno music is there anything nowadays you do like no I don't I just feel like I'm, <laughs> I've aged out I've, I've, I just feel I used to like when nights were much more I, I could prefer the tunes in the George than Mother. Mother too cool now. Yeah. Um, and I used to like when they'd play like disco-y, funky music. I like that kind of thing. But I don't go to either of those clubs much at all. The George or Mother. So I don't know. Don't go out that Do much. You know, mine is uh, Kate Bush. She's your gay icon? Yeah. Kate Bush? Was? Yeah. I'm obsessed with Kate Bush. I absolutely Tell us about what you like. Uh, I just think her artistry, her music, um, her vibe, she's her the, the kind of things she picks up on. The we, her music sounds like no one else's. Yeah, and it's like she's using things. She's got like sort of Celtic fiddles in there. She's got Ilan pipes. She's got you know, v- uh, v- pizzicato. She sounds like Vivaldi, and then she sounds like a rock star. And she all owns at the same it all. Time. And she owns it all. She's she owns all that. She owns. She, owns she has Kate no like thing of now. Yeah. Nowadays they're all locked into contracts and all sorts. Kate Bush owns all the stuff. She, she makes everything. every cent. She owns this podcast. Yeah, Kate Bush owns <laughs> yeah, this podcast. Yeah, Kate Bush owns the podcast. She's here actually. Yeah, and that's and she, you and know, she stopped. Yeah, <laughs> she, she just, just like, stopped. It's the end of that. But I thought she was nice. Remember there was a big, the, the song came in, Stranger Things. Yeah. And then that song, which was it, Run Up That Hill, what was the song? Run Up That Hill. Was yeah. it Run Up That Hill? Yeah, Run Up That Hill. If you want to watch a bit of cringe, um, Rita Ora does a version of Run Up That Hill and it's horrendous. Uh, so do YouTube that What's there. that great Twitter moment with Rita Ora? She said, she allegedly was hacked no. <laughs> and the tweet went out saying, 100,000 retweets and I'll drop my new single or whatever, my new album. Yeah. And then it didn't get any retweets and then she was like, she made such a fuss in the apology. She's like, my, my Twitter was hacked. No one gets my music until I'm ready. It was like, you're not even, everyone knows you're not a real pop star. Like, she's a brand. Yeah. She's not a pop. Anyway. Yeah, she's a, a soft drink or a dilutable drink. Yeah, she's whatever. She's or, not, Sorry, she's, that's Kia Aura. She's not real. Um, um, she's pretty, I did watch someone's TikTok, a rundown of all her relationships and... That's also something to look at. Well, that's that's what she's there for. Yeah, but she's she has a cool selection. Didn't she do some a Some of them are men, someone some of them are women. Yeah, I mean, Maybe it's she all... Do... Tessa Thompson, um, she was involved. It's brilliant. She Am watched... I doing a good job of, of, uh, of not talking about movies and stuff and talking about fun pop culture stuff? Yeah, this is... Am well, I this is kind of our... The, like, it's a bit, a bit of our pride issue then. This yeah, is, this is our pride we're issue. We're a bit late to it. <laughs> do you know what I saw on the way in here? Because it's still Pride the week we're recording this. Somebody, just a neighbour business here, and they have their front desk their front Desk after their home desk is like pri- their pride flags and all. And it's like pride in our profession. And I was just thinking about that and I was like, pride in our profession. Now I understand mm, that's, what they're going yeah, for. The language doesn't but I'm kind of like, no, it's pride about sexuality. That's, yeah. It's not actually yeah. about your job. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> the, hold on, hold on. I, I, good for you for giving it a whirl, mm. but you've missed it. No, it's like, it's a bit off. I, I, they mean like, Pride it's a, they're mean, trying to do a play on words. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As in, we're we're pride in our, in our profession. It's pr- we're it's prideful. Pride, yeah. But it just sounds like we're proud of our job. We're proud of our jobs. I Which actually is it just a, a little smugness you've created. Yeah. Right. I don't mind. Look, put up the things. Put up the things. Put up the flags. I don't mind. Anyway, pride is now over at the time this is out. Yeah, so pride is again. Over. No more pride. Yeah, yeah. And we will have Tony back in and to do the sort of just masculine male straight talk. Um, yeah. yeah, well, are you? You're not femme, but you're boyish. I feel you have uh, a youthful energy. I, I, w- I would. I, the joke I usually do around pride, which I guess I'll burn now, but is that I, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not a gay man, but uh, I never identified as a gay man, but the rest of the world did identify me as a gay man. That's good. Um, so it's kind of like I grew up and was always. I every once in a while, <laughs> every once in a while as a teenager, you know, my mum like. Would, I'd come downstairs and I kind of had odd fashion things or whatever. I, instead of a bag with two straps, I had like a, a side thing. And I remember the first day I put this That's on gay. and I'd come downstairs and my mum would do this thing like, and she'd always say this sentence to me. She'd go, son, is there something you want to tell me? Oh my God. <laughs> she'd say that to me all the time. And I'd just be like, mom, not gay. 
even though they'd like leave the room and go like, oh fuck, I'm definitely gay. I'm gay. <laughs> like, we're, like just like, oh my god, I'm gay. I'm gay. Um, so I, I, I ha- that's kind of the jokes I do around Pride, which I, I guess I can't do anymore. Yeah, but no one will remember this. this yeah. will be a, see, this will be a whatever July 2024. No one will remember that by June 25. Yeah, yeah. But it's funny though. We're not like when you're maybe this Pride will have sorted, and actually yeah. there'll be no need for it next year. Yeah. Maybe all the problems uh, will go fixed away. Now. Yeah, it's sorted. Yeah. Um, Thank God. Yeah. Once Thank Trump God, what gets in, I think he'll fix all of that. Um, yeah, and you know, Trump is going to sort it out in America. And if America sneezes, the rest of the world gets a cold. Isn't that it? <laughs> so that's great. And then that's sorted. And then I don't think there's any other problems globally. That's what no, I think, I think that's, that's it. great. It's really it. Um. That's fine. Anything else? <laughs> Time to... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, you know what, that doesn't feel like real opera to me. Because it's in English? Yeah, because it's in English. And it was in Step Brothers, you know? Opera should be shit and boring. Anyway, uh, no, <laughs> no, it can be very moving. I, people yeah. sometimes forget. I worked at uh, the theatre one time and I went to see the... People are always forgetting that, aren't they? <laughs> no, people, I just think like sometimes it is, you think like, oh, it's stuffy and it's old. And actually, yeah. I do, I remember being just absolutely floored by the woman, the character and her husband was dead and she was dying she couldn't drink the thing I forget which opera it was mm. and I was like not happy at the time and I was like oh my god I'm her and it was like oh my god what am I doing relating to this high <laughs> melodrama operatic thing I was like I'm her no I'm it's her. it's uh, no opera is is, is uh, something that people I've never actually gone to see it um, but my, my sister was working as uh, a stage maker in the Swedish mm-hmm. opera house she was making the sets and things like that she did I think Sweeney Todd is that an opera and uh and she said it's class. Like it's it's like a, I don't know, like almost like a soaps sort of melodrama, uh, but then it has like beautiful music on top. Yeah, and, it's and like you know a, lots of the music. Mm. It's so when the king, when they, it's like hearing a big hit at a at a band's gig, you're like, oh, oh my god, they're playing it. Oh. You know, you're so surprised they do that you know, some or do you know. So you know what's going on. They do sir titles. What are sir titles? That's above sub sir meaning titles. below, and then sir s u r sir titles of in French king it means table. on. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So they put that up. They have screens, and you can look at those. But also, you just get generally moved by the thing. I, I'm telling you. I'm Were telling you moved? You. Yeah, I was moved. Well, I yeah, will be a religious listener to Lyric FM, but when the opera comes on, I turn that off. I forgot about Lyric FM, Where and then I better. put it on, and I was like, "This is it." Me and Ray was stuck on. I went. I put on um, Gustav Holtz. Is that his name? The mm. Planets. I put yes. it on the other day, and then just let it keep playing whatever it wanted. Oh. We were talking about, you know, oh. the Pierre Gint. Yes. All right, this is in the a, Hall of the This Mountain truly King. is a podcast uh, 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 of, of, of everything. Uh, 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 we one. were wondering, it's kind of chicken and the egg kind of thing. You know, the morning. Yeah. Um, Pierre, the Pierre Gint Sweet. Yeah, but which is the morning one? Oh, in the shit. Hall of the Mountain King. Oh. This one, yeah. So, this, right? Someone did Leaving Cert music. <laughs> you? Uh, yes. I want to play. In September, on the 8th, Sunday, come to Cork Podcast Festivals to see the Young Hat Guys. Go- young Hat Guys. <laughs> young Hat Guys. <laughs> young hat guys. Hat guys. <laughs> no, but this is plain right. And I was like, I know, I know as a grown-up adult and a person that that's about the morning. Yes. Right? But how, what level of genius, This I know this is not really comedy podcast material, but I'm interested. <laughs> what level of genius... Can you go, okay, I will create sounds with various instruments to suggest, to evoke mourning outside in the wilderness and woods? That is, I know that everyone knows this already, but I just had a moment where it came back over my, washing over me again. Remarkable. It's like the morning. Incredible. Birds are singing in the trees. You can hear the birds. Flowers you can are see the rabbit. to take in... <laughs> Now I know there's a bit of chicken and the egg that I learned in the school. The deer is walking in this front of the two hungover people driving <laughs> home from yeah. the festival. A small deer comes on as well. But is that not amazing? I know. I'm anyway, emotionally, I don't feel like crying for some reason. Go for it. <sighs> Go for it. It's pride. <laughs> you can cry. Anyway, mom, you were right. <laughs> you were right. I'm full gay now. Yeah, I don't know. I was just into that. I was thinking, and like the the. If you listen to the the planets who they make the one Gustav Holt, Gustav, Gustav Holtz, I'm sure is the wrong name, but like it was like I remember a teacher uh, put that on that that's going to be extracurricular. We're yeah. in primary school, a teacher put that on. She told us about it. Mm. She did Tchaikovsky with us, and she did the Gustav Holtz, and she was like, "This is about the planets and the character of Mars and Mars yeah. being based on the god of war," and she played all this, and I was like, 
she offered me this understanding of a higher plane of conceptual thought as a little child and I am now a grown up man and I still remember and respect the feeling. So I often slag teachers on the stage and everything <laughs> but like that is the st- kind of stuff that they, the influence they can have on the children. Uh, that's a huge impact. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway, that's not really comedy podcast. <laughs> it's but. not, but that was a beautiful moment. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, that is a beautiful piece. The Pier Gent Suite. Um, and do you know what I want to do for this podcast to sort of close it out? Oh, can I do something kind of special? Okay, I'm nervous, but go ahead. No, no, it's not. It's not. We're not going to experience it. Um, but the intro to this song, to this podcast, is a song uh, called "Tell Me I'm Wrong" by the Sleaze. And do you know what? We played a gig there a couple of weeks ago, and I was playing it, and I was like, "This is a good song." And I realized. It's so much become part of that intro that it's sort of losing its 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 way as a song. And it's a it's a good song. It's a banger. So what I'd like to do at the end of this podcast is just play the whole song through. OK, <laughs> just listen to it. Just give it. Can you tell I'm them sure to go listen have. to it? Well, no, they can just we're just going to play it now because I own the rights to the song. We wrote it together with the sleeves. So it, to play us out, because I've always wanted to say that. Okay, I'll just say one more thing. Yeah. Just on last week's, you can do that now in a second. <laughs> just on last week's episode <laughs> of Michael Fry, and we joked at the end oh, yes. about the beef is back on. I thought yeah. that was funny when you said beef is back on. Yeah. Uh, the comedy beef is actually has been quashed. We do, unfortunately, are having a personal yes. fight with Michael Fry, so yes. we haven't. We're not on speaking terms with him no. at the moment. So. Yeah. Just to be mindful of that going forward for everybody, that it is a difficult time, and you know, friendships change, and it has been. It's been. Well, you know, it's been challenging. So while the comedy beef, you know, ha 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 ha, ha Ireland ha, ha, AM, ha. chatting about the beef, that's finished. Yes. We are we are currently uh, struggling um, in our relationship <laughs> there. Uh, and also with um, Emma Dorn as well. Mm, uh, yeah. I hate her now as well. Yeah, we've so, just decided. Uh, we might have to get her on to kind of uh, ignite the beef. I guess that's what we should call it now when we invite a guest on. Ignite the beef. Ignite the beef. Yes. Uh, so ignite the beef. Uh, the beef. The beef, you know... The buff. The buff, the energy of that podcast really reminds me of a, an old bluesy rock and roll song. Sure. Yeah. And so... Present it like it's your show on Lyric FM. Well, that was a beautiful song from the Pyrgin Suite. Uh, symphony number two or four. I can't remember. There's so many symphonies out there. Anyway, to play us out, a little bit of something different. We've got a blues, a five-piece blues-inspired rock group from Ireland called The Sleaze. And they're going to play this song... Tell me I'm wrong. And let me tell you, these boys have something to say.
I'm looking.